to do it out there. Saying you come here, no slacks, matador britches, no tank tops, and no obscene inscriptions on your shirts and dresses knee length. I, t I told a word one time, why didn't they give that kid when they went to middle school? Amen. What's that sign doing here on a, on, a, on a security prison? You ought to get them out in the fifth grade, man. And you get there and they give you a Bible when you get there, you know. Why don't you give them a Bible in grade school? Yeah. I've got, got to get, I'll get back to this thing. I'll get, I'll get custom mad here in a minute. I, I, have a, I have a problem in that my background, very often some old familiar words come to one's mind. And especially in dealing with this kind of stuff. I mean, I hate to see young men and kids taken advantage of and played for suckers by the government, and that's what they've been doing in this country here for about 40 years. And it, it isn't right. It isn't right. I see, where was I here? Oh, about this Bible. <laughs> this kid in prison gets it. Oh, yeah, when he finally gets to the prison, they give him their own Bible. <laughs> they go, I, I make the circuit, I mean, about 25 of them a year. And you can get an NIV anywhere. A living Bible, but you can have a hard time getting you a King James Bible. Right, well, now this thing here is anti Semitism. You got to be careful of that thing. The reason why the God has blessed America, even though it's dumped that book, is because we are still the only country that not only gives that Jews liberty, but special privileges and rights, and even uh, the right to get away with stuff that isn't right. Like in the ACLU. A lot of people don't want to have you sing Christmas carols in the shopping center of Jews. And you've heard of many of you bring the suit against the school for allowing the, somebody to pray in the school. And obviously they're under the wrath of God, First Thessalonians 2, and going to hell, Hebrew, Matthew chapter 8, and the son of perdition is going to be of Jewish extraction. So you can't blame somebody for getting anti-Semitic, but you don't dare be that way. And right now America's getting that way. Like I say, I tremble, boy. I, I know what God can do, man makes me nervous <laughs> all right now here's this bunch coming over here they're claiming the promises given to israel and when these promises in the old testament they're for the christian and the church or for the english-speaking people so we're israel which of course is just nonsense they say the word jew here this the word jew is first in the second chronicle which means nothing the word jew is only an application to a judean jew no it's not paul divides all this world's population of three groups give none offense neither the jew nor the church nor the gentile if you're not a jew you're a christian or you're a gentile if you're a gentile you're not in the body of christ in the body of christ there's neither jew nor gentile now, no racial differences in the body of Christ. In the body of Christ, that's a spiritual body. You're one body. Now, outside, there's differences. But in the body of Christ, no difference. All right, this thing here is the idea they got these promises. These are uh, bad Jews over here. Paul says he, he was a Jew. He said that him and Peter were Jews and Galatians. Paul said the oracles of God at Mount Sinai were given to the Jews. Not Israel, the Jews. Paul used the term Jew to cover anybody who's made by Amos and Jacob. Or oh, these promises, how many are in the Old Testament? There are about uh, 700 of them. And the white race is stealing those promises, miserably claiming for themselves in British Israelism. This is Moonies, some of that stuff. It's Joe Smith, he's got a touch of that stuff. And so that you, you can persecute these Jews that are these ten lost tribes that profess to be Jews and are not. You can persecute them because you're Israel and that's that teaching and that teaching is a damnable teaching it'll destroy a nation and it's destroyed more than one of them now what's the, what's the scripture reference Genesis 49 here's where they get it from and once again you can see that every lie has elements of truth in it but it's misplaced in Genesis 49 here's a prophecy on kings uh, 49 10 or take 9 uh, Judah is a lion's whelp. Some of England is a griffin. It's a lion with wings on it. From the prey of my son thou art gone up. He stooped down, he couched the lion as an old lion who shall rouse him up. Christ is called the lion of the tribe of Judah in Revelation. The scepter, now there's your king. See, scepter. The scepter shall not depart from Judah. It did back there, 606 BC. The Lord told that king right before Judah, he said, Thus, Till you tell Jehoiakim, 
He said, O earth, O earth, hear my word. Why she, why she this man childless, a man that shall not prosper, for no man of his seed shall prosper anymore, sitting upon the throne of David in Jerusalem. That, that fellow's name was Jeconiah. The last king was Zedekiah. But when Zedekiah shows up, the, the clown's already gone. That's Jeremiah 22. He says, O earth, earth, earth. Ain't that some address? That isn't addressed to Christians or Jews. It's addressed to everybody in all five conferences. O earth, here will write this man childless, no children. No man of his seed shall prosper anymore. No seed from that fellow will prosper anymore on the throne of David. The Jewish line of thrones and scepters ends with Jeconiah. When Zedekiah shows up, God's all through with you. He jumped him and jumped the crown. Time of the Gentiles, 606. The Lord says, I don't like that fella. Take his name up. Take my J off there. I don't like that J or that Jah or that Yah or that Yahoo or Yahoo. I don't want that J-E even connect that fella's name. So he calls him Kaniah. That's in Jeremiah 22. He says, I don't want to, that shell little uh, prefix there, shell, but not a, a prefix. That thing is, is abbreviation for Jehovah. Like Jah. You remember seeing Jah one time in the Psalms? J-A-H. Jehoshaphat. Joshua. Jehoshua. Joash. Jesus. What does a J mean? Jehovah. What's S-U-S? -S? Saves. You know what Jesus means? It means Jehovah saves. I'm a Jehovah witness. Amen. Amen. But my Jehovah is manifest in the flesh. I said, there went the throne right there. Now he said, that's the end of that crown. The scepter is gone. Now he says, the scepter won't depart from Judah until Shiloh will come. Well, there's old Shiloh. And there's a, like, a Shalom. And there's Salem. And there's Shalom. Peace. Jerusalem, city of peace, Salem, Melchizedek, king of Salem. He's talking about Christ. To Shiloh come. How you know it's Christ? Look at verse 11. Look at verse 11. Any doubt in your mind about who it is? It's Christ. That's how he came in Jerusalem on the ass's coat. And he washed his clothes in blood when he came to the second advent. It's Christ. Now, see what the prophecy said? It said, I'll have a crown and a scepter. And that crown and scepter belong to Judah. And that thing won't depart until Christ comes. 33 A.D. Jerusalem, the full of an ass. So there'll be a Jewish king from the time of Judah getting to be king, and that'll be David, until Christ comes. 606, no king, no scepter. It didn't last till Christ came. The book lied. <laughs> See that book? Rough stuff. He said, Judah will have it until Christ comes. He didn't. The crown disappeared there, and nobody had it when Christ came. When Christ came, there wasn't a Jewish king. The Roman army of occupation. I'm telling you, the book's a bear trap. <laughs> so this dumb British Israelite says, well, it had to be somewhere between 606 when Christ came. So Jeremiah <laughs> got this stone, and he went up here, and it came from England, and when Christ shows up, the crown's still here. They still got the crown here because it won't depart until Christ comes. All right, now it's up here. Now the king goes over here, and the king now belongs to the white people. And it's just like uh, black Muslims, they got it the other way, it belongs to the black people. And the white supremacists, they got it the wrong way, it belongs to the white people. I got news for you, don't belong to either one of you. <laughs> it belongs to a Judean Jew. <laughs> Maybe with a hook nose, kike. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Boy, with this, with this, would this sermon be popular at the UN or would it not? <laughs> <coughs> See, the Gentiles got wise in their own conceit. 
And they said, God's all through with that Jew. He dumped that Jew, and he hadn't dumped that Jew. The Lord God, you want to on Christ? Mary, you're going to conceive in your womb. She did. And bring forth a son. She did. And he should be uh, great in the sight of the Lord God. It's true. And he should be called the Son of the Most High. It's true. And the Lord God shall give to him the throne of his father David. And he did it. He gave him a crown of thorns. So what? He lied. Or else it's out in the future. You, you, you're pinned up there every time. Every time. Before you get through, I'll ruin you for life. <clears throat> Before you get through, when you're reading through the Old Testament, you'll suddenly find out you're reading about the second coming of Christ just about every other page, yeah. including Exodus. There are two witnesses to Pharaoh. There are two to the Antichrist. Well, the Antichrist witnesses of Moses, so is Pharaoh. Go back in there. There's more the second advent in Exodus. There is in Matthew. Oh, and I see that thing. He has this crown preserved by the white people and the English-speaking people and all that. And the truth of the matter is, it's going to go to David, the son of David, Christ. But the thing has been flipped over, which means God is not through with the Jew. He's going to convert the Jew. How's he going to convert him to his son? How's he going to do that in the tribulation when the Antichrist is killing like flies? You see, he's going to give him the truth in the tribulation. Moses and Elijah. The law and the prophets. Yeah. Get Revelation 11, you'll get your Bible right. And you won't wind up as a Mooney or a British Israelite. <laughs> All right, now, here's this, here's this, this fable. It's obvious they're fable. And that fable is uh, carried out by the, those people from the pastor I showed you, and I'll give you one more. I'm going to close. Ezekiel 37. All private interpretation. Private interpretation. Seventh-day Adventists got some of this stuff in this stuff, too. They're picking up the Sabbath. Trying to pretend they're Jews or something. Uh, Ezekiel 37. Uh, 37, uh, 16. How many ever had a, a Mormon come by your house and show you movies? Anybody ever have that around here? At least to travel around and carry a slide with them. Yeah. They'll come around talking about Ephraim, you know, and Manasseh, you know, and one of them is England, one of the United States, and all that kind of stuff. They don't realize the Lord took Ephraim's name and bought it out from under heaven in Hosea. Ephraim was joined to idols, let him alone. In the book of Revelation, we list 144,000 of no tribe of Ephraim. Little, little air there, Joe. <laughs> Joe Smith, little air there, boy. I think you're 37, verse 16. More thou the son of man, take thee one stick and write upon it for Judah as a scepter. For the children of Israel and his companions. Then take another stick and write upon it for Joseph the stick of Ephraim and his companions. For all the house of Israel, so forth and so on. But be joined together. Verse 19. But 19 says the tribes of Israel. Tribes. Talking about Jews, not Englishmen, Germans, and Americans. 22, I'll make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel. It's Palestine, not America. And one king shall be king of them all. It's a Jew, king of kings, lord of lords, the city of the great king. That's the house of Israel, the house of beauty, read about Hebrews chapter 8. Down there, verse 25, I'll, And they shall dwell in the land that I gave to Arafat and the Palestinians, wherein your fathers have dwelt, and they shall dwell therein, even they and their children, and their children and children forever. And my servant David shall be a prince, their prince forever. They'll have a king, they'll be Christ. And he'll have a prince. He'll be David. You out there past the millennium, the king goes back into New Jerusalem. And then David, he stays here and runs it. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace for them. It shall be an everlasting covenant with them. And I will place them and multiply them and set my sanctuary in the midst of them forevermore. My tabernacle shall be with them. Yeah, I'll be their God. They shall be on my people. They get converted. And the heathen, that's us. That's us. And the heathen shall know that I, the Lord, do sanctify Israel, and that ain't us. <laughs> when my sanctuary, there's the temple we built, shall be in the midst of them forevermore. We're not Israel. We're, we're heathen Gentile dogs. And we got saved by the mercy of God, got in the blessings of Israel, and joined the commonwealth of Israel to the undeserved, unearned, un, unearned merit of God Almighty. Amen. Now, we'll close for today. I'm going to say this in closing. 
I wouldn't be afraid to debate any Jewish rabbi about anything. He put me to sleep. I know his Bible so much better he knows it. He couldn't keep up with me for 15 feet. He don't know his Bible. None of them. Like the Hebrew University and over there in Palestine, uh, I can make them look like they've been to the third grade. That's only because I picked up what they dropped. They dropped this and I picked it up. I remember one time I was flying the plane, before I ever flew on the plane. I was in a DC-10 up there about 35,000 feet, first class, high on the hog, low on the chicken. I had those of sort of steak up in the first class cabin. Got up there and had a Jew sitting next to me, been witness to him, getting nowhere with it. And uh, Isaiah 53 and Psalm 22 and this and that. I was up there in the high place there, going along eating this stuff, and after a while I just got kind of looking. You want to know what was wrong? I said, look, look. Well, look at you now. Now look at him for a while. I'm trying to look out the window. I thought to myself, ain't this a scene? I mean, here I am, an old, uncircumcised Gentile dog, trying to teach a child of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob his own book. And the oracles of God were given to him, they weren't given to me. And he said, if you trust me, Ruffman, I'll call you to ride upon the high places of the earth and feed you with the heritage of your father, Jacob. And I'm out there 35,000 feet eating these steaks <laughs> and telling this poor lost sinner going to hell and I got to help him with his own book. Now listen, if, not, if you didn't read that book for any other reason, I thought I'll show you something. God, when God Almighty took you Gentiles, he, he put you in the commonwealth of Israel. That is, you got the spiritual blessing, not the physical, but the spiritual. Because Isaac spiritually is a type of Christ. And when God did that, then you got in, you got the oracles of God, and God gave you all this stuff, but he did it through that Jew. Don't ever forget that. He did it through that Jew. You gotta love that Jew. And that Jew's hard to love. That's what they call chutzpah. And chutzpah means they got an arrogant, they got an arrogant way of, uh, I just gotta give you one more illustration. <laughs> uh, we have a blind Jew come to our church one time named Marks. He wasn't Carl, but his name was Marks. And, and he came there with a CNI dog and came in. He was a good fellow. Love the Lord. Believe the book. He's saved. King James man. Fine fellow. But I was going through some rough things in those days. Went kind of short tempered with people and stuff. And I didn't stay at my house. Thank you, brother. Had not stay at my house and taken care of him. And he came in there, you know. Have you notified the newspapers? They know who I am, you know, that kind of stuff. I mean, it's just coming, you know, I'm, I'm the big shot, you know. Are the people, you told the people, did you receive my brochure? Uh, did, you, uh, did you make some television spots for me? Uh, you know, it's a deal in this kind of a meeting, you know, and I don't know. That stuff went on for a couple of days. And a very evil thought came to my mind. And what I've got in my house, I've got about 400 hours of German music. And about a hundred of it is marches. <laughs> I've got every SS march they ever marched to, man. I mean, by the original cast. <laughs> and I had a record there called Parada March to Lon Carols. Parada March to Lon Carols is the march of the tall fellows. And that's a, that's a, that's a division that Rommel had, a, a mechanized division where the shortest guy in it was six feet tall. The rest of them were six two, six three, six four, six five, six six. You get a thousand men like that over six feet tall, the guide on a six feet tall. And they had white gloves, jack boots, you know, and get that good group cut through stuff, boy, I like that, boy, I like that. I mean, it makes you blood run cold, boy. I have on them records. You hear these boots clacking on the record, you know. And when a German plays a march, it's somebody gonna get a shot. <laughs> it is like a American bands. American bands are high school and college bands, they're show bands, you know. <laughs> Junk, you know. But a German band means business. And when they come on that bass drum will hit that bass drum, I mean enough to knock both sides out of it. And then what they play in that thing is a slow goose step. Now a regular is 120 a minute. This is about 80 a minute. And that melody goes down. Somebody's gonna get shot. Melody goes, these old boots going clack, 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 clack. And this Jew is blind. 
Now, blind people have a much better sense of hearing, you know, than <laughs> people eyes. And I sat him down that thing and played that thing right next to him. And that fellow sat there and just sweat. I mean, the sweat just came off and just streamed down his face, boy. I felt like a dirty dog. <laughs> this one out that band going, rum dum dum up. I mean, I mean, those things come to like this, boy. But who stepped about that, about that speed? You're in them clack, 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 clack. That old boy just sat there, and I thought he was going to have a heart attack. And I finally shut the thing off, and he says, Where did you get that? <laughs> I felt so bad. <laughs> you know, I did that night. I mean, literally, I gave him my bed. I slept on the back of the couch and gave him my bed that night. <laughs> Just, uh, I don't want to atone for my sins, you know. <laughs> and that's the way it is. You've got to love them. Maybe you can't trust them. Maybe you can't have a fellowship with them. You've got to love them. All right, brother, that's about enough. We've got 12, 30 years. they got enough work on for a while.